So let's get our Bibles out and we're going to say the pledge. And today we have, look who we have today. Hey, everybody. Is everybody ready to do the pledge? Hey, Hey. how you doing? Get it? It's good to see you. How can it? Oh. Joined us today. Hi, Lucky. Hi, Lucky. Hi, We're going to do the pledge today. Everybody ready? Stand on your Bible. I pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance. Do the Bible. Do the Bible. God's holy word. God's holy word. I will make it a land. I will make it a land. Onto my feet. Onto my feet. And a light onto my path. And a light onto my path. I will hide its words. I will hide its words. In my heart. In my heart. And I might not sin against God. And I might not, I not sin against, against God. God. Amen. 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 Now, I want to tell you kids something. All my line cups out there, we're a little bit behind, but we can come back. So make sure and post everything this week. We can come back. Bye. Okay, right, Marty. Love you. Bye. Bye, Marty. Bye, Marty. Bye, Marty. See you soon. Well, that was our pledge. Thank you, Mr. Marty, for helping us with the pledge today. No problem. So, we're going to get our memory first. Hey, Mom, these faces are fierce. <laughs> I love all these faces. I love them all. Okay, so we're going to read our Bible passage. It's Psalms 1. Everybody's doing a great job on learning their memory verses. I'm so proud of everybody. So let me read it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. And he shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way to righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we're working on verse five this week. So I'm going to say it and then you guys say it after me. Okay. So here we go. Topic, how to be blessed. Topic, how to be blessed. Psalms 1, 5. Psalms 1, 5. New King James Version. New King James Version. Therefore the ungodly... Therefore, shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. In the congregation of the righteous. Topic: How to be blessed. Topic: How to be blessed. Psalms one five. New King James Version. Okay, so Nick's going to start teaching, and this is our coloring page today, so everybody get your coloring page out, your crayons, and we're going to get started. Amen. That verse that we're learning this week, basically a lot of our lesson this week, I want to read it one more time. It says, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. Who's the ungodly? Oh, no. The ungodly are the ones who say God is not the boss, and they try and be their own boss. 
So whoever's trying to be their own boss, and then they re also they reject God's family invitation. We need to learn who the wicked is this morning. When the Bible talks about the wicked or the ungodly, it's someone who tries to be their own boss, and it's someone who rejects God's invitations. So watch what God says here. He says, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. You know what that means? They're not going to be able to stand up. They're going to fall down in the day of judgment because they're not stable. Because God is a good judge. And then the second part of it says, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. So sinners and righteous is like oil and water. They don't mix. Right? They don't mix at all. And so the sinners won't stand on the day of, I'm sorry, the ungodly won't stand on the day of judgment. And the sinners are not allowed to stay with the righteous. So the question is, to be, to be righteous means to keep God's commands. But we're going to learn, we learned last week, Moses delivered all of God's family, right? But they, they all began to forget about God. And they started to obey their own commands, and they forgot about God's commands. And they even rejected some of God's invitations. And so God's family start behaving like the wicked. This is sad news. That God's family, who he saved out of Egypt, they began to act like the Egyptians. They started to act like all the other nations. And they didn't obey God like they were supposed to. And when God would offer them an invitation, they would harden their hearts. And their hearts was getting hard like we learned from Noah, right? With the mean snake, that's what he does. So now God has a decision to make. So everyone, I want you to say this after me. Say, God must, God must do what is right. Do what is right. So we know God loves his family. But God also has to do what's right because God is righteous and he always does what's right. So God not only stops the wicked when they do wrong, but God also has to stop Abraham's family, this special family that he has. He has to stop them when they do wrong because God is right. Always. God always does what's right. So remember, God God must do what's right. And ready? To be in God's family, you must be righteous. So say that. Say God's family. God's family. Must be righteous. Must be righteous. So we got two main points here. God's family must be righteous. And God must do what is right. And so what is the right thing for God to do? When the wicked, what did God do throughout the whole Bible? When people were wicked, when people behave wicked, God said, That's, So when people began began to be wicked, God sent the flood, right? God sent the, the plagues on all of Egypt because they were wicked and they wouldn't. God always stops the wicked. So now God has to make a decision. God needs to stop the wicked. God wants to stop the wicked and offer an invitation to his family to come and be his family because they're rejecting him and they're living on their own thing. So God needs to take, God needs to punish his family because they're rejecting him. They're rejecting his offers and they're being their own boss. So what is God to do? So we're going to figure out what, how God deals with this. We learned last week that he sent Jesus. Right. And Jesus was the promised son that God promised back in Genesis chapter three to come and deal with our sin problem. See, all of mankind, we have a problem called sin. And to be in God's family, you have to be righteous. Well, because we're all sinners, none of us are righteous. So none of us can be in God's family. So we need a way so that we could become righteous. And Jesus is the way. So let's read our first verse. Let's see how God dealt with this. We know he sent Jesus as a baby. We colored that last week. But in Psalms 107, 20, it says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. 
So God's family kept committing sins and they brought destruction about on themselves. So just like in the beginning, remember we learned God, the world was, was beautiful, but it says the darkness was on the face of the deep and God spoke and there was light. We all remember that, right? God said, let there be light, and there was light. So God spoke, and everything listened. And again, God's going to send his word to fix the world because the whole world is in darkness again. They're in the mean kingdom. They don't want to be in God's family. So we'll see what is his word. In John 1, it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. So Jesus is the word, and Jesus created everything, because Jesus is God. So God sends Jesus into the world. So before God spoke, and Jesus fixed everything. But now he's going to send Jesus as a baby to come into our world. And verse 1, 10 to 13, it says, John 1, 10 to 13 on our verse papers, right? This is what we're reading from. This is what it says. It says, he was in the world and the world was made by him and the world knew him not. So the mean kingdom, they don't know who he is. He came unto his own, Abraham's family, right? He came unto his own, but his own received him not. Wow. So God sent his family an uh, invitation by his very own son. Before he sent Moses and he would raise somebody up from his family, right? But this time God himself comes as Jesus and they're rejecting him. And it says, but as to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So Jesus is given everybody the right to be in God's family, but nobody's accepting it. So what happens? Jesus grows up and he is, he comes and he's going to be the sacrifice for God. And what God's trying to do, he's making a safe place for his family. So he builds something that's very special and it's called the church. He builds something that's very special, a place for all of God's family to come. It's called the church. So Jesus comes and he builds a big fortress called the church and he invites everybody to come in just like he did with the ark and having the blood on the door. And this is his last night before he's going to go hang on the cross for us. Everybody look at that cross. And did you ever wonder why did Jesus have to go on that cross? Exactly. So why was Jesus on that cross? You know why? Because he we, he traded places with us. See, because God's people, all the earth, we wanted to be our own boss and none of us was righteous. So we all deserved to be on the cross and we deserve to be separated from God. So how does God treat the wicked? God stops the wicked and God rejects the wicked. So remember this now. So you must be righteous to be in God's family. And how does God deal with the unrighteous or the ungodly? He stops them from their sins and he separates himself from them because they're not a part of his family. So we deserve to be stopped and we deserve to be separated from God. But God sent Jesus and Jesus came and you know what Jesus did? Jesus lived a perfect life. So you know what that means? Jesus obeyed every one of the father's commands. Jesus says, I have food to eat that you know not of. His food is to do the will of his father who sent him. So he came to do what his father wanted him to do. So on the last night before Jesus is getting ready to be handed over to be on the cross, he had the last supper. He had a meal with his family. And that's what we're going to learn about today. And it's very similar. It's very similar to Moses. It's going to sound familiar. Remember Moses when they ate the lamb, right? And they put the blood on the door. We're going to read it now. Matthew 26, verse 26. And we're going to see why Jesus on the cross 
it's such a big deal for us. It says in verse 26, it says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. Whoa. Who remembers being in the house with Moses? Moses gave the people lamb to eat. But Jesus comes and says, I'm the lamb. I'm the reason why you can be acceptable to God. And he says, here, take this bread. It's my body. What do you got to do with the bread of Jesus? Eat you got to eat it. Eat it. You got to eat it, right? So Jesus says, take and eat. This is my body, right? And mm -hmm. now we're going to see what he says. Then he says, this is my body. So then he says, and he took a cup and he gave thanks for it. And he gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is said, shed for the many for the remission of sins. So why did Jesus shed his blood? For the remission of sins. And what is a sin? A sin is when you break God's commandment. It's when you disobey God. So man committed all kinds of sins, even his special family. They started committing sins, and they wanted to be their own boss. So God came, and instead of another lamb or another ark, he sent his son, his word, to come and heal our disease and forgive our sins. So Jesus came to shed his blood for the remission of sins. And the next part of this lesson is very important that we understand that Jesus came Jesus, and Jesus, willingly Jesus. traded places with us. We're going to see what happens. He says, if I will not drink this cup again until the day I drink it with you new in my father's kingdom. Let's read the next verse. It says, and he went a little further and fell on his face, and he prayed, saying to his father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Let's read our next verse in the first paper. And Jesus answered. I want to make sure and read all these verses. And Jesus answered and said, suffer ye thus far. And he touched his... Oh, uh, turn this, the, the soldiers came to get Jesus while he was in the garden. They're coming to take him away. And they're going to bring him to the cross. And one of them came and tried to, one of his disciples, Peter, cut off the ear of one of these soldiers. And Jesus heals the man's ear. Now, the people who's coming to take him away and bring him to the cross, Jesus is offering healing to them. He's still offering them to come inside God's family. And you're supposed to tell him on his way home from the yard. Let's read, let's read John 10, 18, and then we'll summarize our lesson today. No man, Jesus says this about his life. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. This commandment have I received from my father. So Jesus was sent from the father to lay down his life for us. So when he was on the cross, he didn't deserve to be on that cross. Jesus didn't deserve to be beaten and rejected and put on a cross. He deserved to be in God's family because he was perfect. He was righteous. We were not righteous. We were sinners and sinful, and we're, we need to be punished for being wrong, right? So God not only punishes the wrongs of the wicked, but he also has to punish the wrongs of his family. <laughs> Does that mean, you guys hear me? So God doesn't only punish the wicked. God also punishes the sins of his family. God has to have a way to do what is right because God is right. He always does what's right. So Jesus oh, came, Jesus came and he gave himself on the cross. Let's read the next verse, 1045. Oh. And while Jesus was on that cross, this is what he did. It says, for the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life as a ransom for many. You know, ransom means ransom means payment. So Jesus offered a payment for us. So Jesus paid God for our wrongs. So when Jesus was suffering on the cross, he wasn't suffering for what he did wrong. He was suffering for what we did wrong. 
And he suffered for what all of God's family did wrong because God's offering an invitation to people to be in his family. But the unrighteous or the sinners are not allowed to be in God's family. So Jesus came and makes God's invitation available to everybody because because of his blood, we can be made righteous. You guys follow me? So because of what Jesus done on the cross, we deserve to go on the cross and he deserved to be in God's kingdom. But instead, Jesus came down to us and he became a man. And he went on the cross so we could be in God's kingdom. That is such a beautiful picture that Jesus left heaven. He was in God's kingdom already. He didn't, he didn't have to come down here. We were all headed for the cross because we were sinners and we disobeyed God. And God has to do what's right because God does what's right because he's right. But Jesus came, God's word came and lived a perfect life and showed us what it looks like to serve God and what his family is supposed to look like. He gave us a good example. And then he went on the cross and traded places with us. And because just like with the lamb, watch the lamb that gave him a covering, the skins, Adam and Eve got to go free. Why? Because the lamb had to die. Watch in the flood with Noah, Noah's family was safe in the ark. Why? Because God made a door for them to be able to come in to be safe from judgment. And the rest of everyone else wasn't safe from judgment. They got stopped. And just like with Noah I and mean, with Moses, all of God's family, what happened? When, when the weapon came in, the, the weapon passed over God's family, right? Why did it pass over God's family? Because they took a lamb and the lamb didn't get to get passed over. The lamb had to die. So God's family was passed over because the lamb wasn't. The lamb got the, we took the blood from the lamb and we eat the flesh of the lamb. And that's what allows us to be passed over. And in the same with Jesus, that was an innocent lamb. The lamb didn't do nothing wrong. And Jesus is an innocent lamb. He's the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That old, the lamb with Moses could only cover up their sins. But Jesus is the lamb of God. And the lamb of God comes to eternally do away with all of our sins problems. So we can eternally be in God's family. So when Jesus came and he lived his perfect life, he said to his father, is there any way for the cup to pass for me? Is there any way for God's, for your family to be made right with you without me doing this? And the father said, no. And Jesus said, okay, then I will do it. Jesus willingly, even though he didn't deserve it, because he did everything right. He did everything perfect. He accepted all of God's missions that he gave him. He was the best agent, right? He was the perfect agent. But he came and he took the tool of the cross and he traded places with us so that our sins was on him. Just like the lamb, our sins went on the lamb and God's weapon passed over us. Jesus is our lamb and our sins go on him. And when he was on that cross and he was punished, he took our punishment. And guess what we get? His righteousness. And now we could all be righteous enough to be in God's family because Jesus' death and resurrection. So because Jesus gives you his righteousness and you give him your, your sins, now you can be in God's family. And I know that's kind of hard maybe to understand for some of us and moms. This is where this is our responsibility, right, is to teach Jesus to our kids. And if you feel they, if they got questions, make sure and be sensitive to them. But Jesus took our sins and we take his righteousness. And what he done on the cross makes us acceptable to God. And I want everybody, if we can, if we can stop coloring for a second, if we all put our heads down, this is a very serious moment. I want you to remember this for the rest of your lives. Let's stop coloring for a second. I can see everybody's eyes looking around and let's be very respectful. And let's thank Jesus that he traded places with us because Jesus traded places with us. We get to be in God's family for all of eternity. Because Jesus traded places with us, we don't have to go to the cross. That's pretty awesome. Imagine when I used to go to the doctor and have to get a shot. I wish somebody would have came and took the shot for me. Because them shots hurt when you get a shot in your arm, right? But this is so much serious, 
more serious than just a shot in the arm. Jesus came and was on the cross for us. So let's pray before the Lord this morning and let's thank God and thank Jesus for what he done for us on the cross. Because we had sin and we couldn't be in God's family. And he gave his righteousness to us and took our sin. So Jesus, Jesus, we thank you as we all be quiet. Let's be very silent. Let's all bow our heads and close our eyes. I can see everybody's eyeballs on here. Let me see them closed. And Lord, we come to you. Jesus, we thank you so much for what you've done for us. You came as a baby and you lived a perfect life here on earth and you gave yourself for us. You gave yourself as a ransom, as a payment. You paid the debt that we owed. You took our sins on yourself and you took our punishment so we can go free. But you also gave us all your good deeds. You gave us your righteousness so that we could be accepted to God. And we could be in God's family. And the only way we can be in God's family is through you. Because you deal with man's sin problem. Every one of us have a problem with sin. And Jesus, you are the solution. You gave yourself on a cross for us and we thank you, God. We accept you. You're our invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to read one more verse in John chapter 3. And this is a very important verse. We all know a famous verse in John 3, 16, which says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. We all know that verse, right? Yeah. I'm going to teach you another one. That's just as important in John chapter 3. And it's verse 36. So we're going to read this verse today. And I want you to understand this, okay? This is an important verse. Ready? Uh, 35 and 36. It says, The Father loves the Son. And has given all things into his hands. So Jesus is in charge of everything. He who believes in the son has everlasting life. So if you believe in Jesus, you have everlasting life. And you could be in God's family. Why? Because Jesus took my sins and he gave me his righteousness. We traded places. But how about if you don't have it? That's what it says. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abides upon him. What verse is that? This is John 3, 35 and 36. So he who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God is upon him. And when Jesus was in the garden and he said, Father, let this cup pass from me. You know what that means? Jesus drank God's wrath for us. So I want to ask you guys, what was in the cup? Listen, God's God anger does. for sin was in the cup. Listen, it's good. It's a good thing that God gets angry with sin because God is good. He has to be angry when something's wrong because he's good. So Jesus drank the cup of God's anger so we could be accepted by God. Even when God's family does sins, it still makes God angry. Because if we do wrong, just because God, this is a very important lesson. You ready? Just because God loves us doesn't mean our sins aren't wrong before him. God still has to punish. He can't save us just because he loves us. That would make God wrong. God wouldn't be right if he saved everyone just because he loved them. That would be the wrong thing to do. But he did the right thing. He came and took all of our wrongs on himself. And he suffered for us on that cross. And he drank the cup of God's anger for sin for us that we could be made right with God. So because Jesus drank the cup, guess what? We don't have to drink that cup. 
because we believe in him. And I know this is deep and heavy, but after five weeks, we're just, we, you got to get a little deep and heavy eventually, right? So we're trying to be graceful. But remember this, this is the one part. I'm going to say this last time and we're done. We're going to go to our rooms. Ready? He who has the son has life. So repeat it after me. Say, he who has the son. He who has the son has, has life. Has life. I don't hear nobody. I would like, I would, let's get some on. Hold on, hold on. Don't go ahead of me now. Do it. Do it. We're going to do it together. Ready? Say, he who has the son has life. He who has the son. We'll try it again. Say, he who has the son has life. Has life. He who does not have the son. Shall not see life. But the wrath of God is on him. Amen. Okay, so let's mute our mics up. Amen. So thankfully, Jesus drank the cup of God's anger for his family. And now we can all go free. But people who don't have God's, if Jesus isn't their boss, then they got to drink their own cup. Amen. And we'll be safe from God's wrath if we're in Jesus. So let's go to our classrooms and our teachers can help unpack all this amazing gospel. And if the moms have any questions or need any help explaining any of this, guys, we're, we're it's very delicate. We're babies, right? But we want to we want to faithfully teach the gospel to our babies. Amen. So if you need any help, we're going to go to our rooms now. Let's pray. So, Lord Jesus, we come to you today, God. Lord, we want to faithfully represent your gospel, Lord, and teach your gospel to your babies, Lord. We want to pray to give wisdom to our teachers and to our moms, Lord. Lord, and for our babies to be able to understand this, God, that Jesus took our place so we could be accepted in God's family. He was on the cross. Thank you, Lord, for your cross. In your precious name we pray. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.